Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Venus and its surface. We're going to discover why the surface of Venus has such an unusual amount of volcanoes and why it is actually so so hot. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So there's a lot of papers out there trying to speculate about why Venus is so much hotter than Earth, even though it's pretty much uh, identical in every other parameter. The temperature here currently is 472 degrees Celsius, or about 745 degrees Kelvin, which is pretty much like 450 degrees higher than it is on Earth. And yes, it is closer to the Sun than Earth, but not by amount that should cause such a tremendous temperature. Now we know that the temperature is very likely caused by the tremendous, tremendous greenhouse effect from um, the atmosphere that's about 92 times thicker than the atmosphere on Earth. And also the composition of the atmosphere that's pretty much mostly um, carbon dioxide. So in other words, most of the temperature comes from a tremendous greenhouse effect. But that's not re really what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to be discussing the reasons for such a hot and unusual atmosphere and also for the differences in geology and geological activities on Venus. Now, if we remove the atmosphere because it's actually very thick and hard to see through and also remove the clouds because we don't really need them, you'll notice that the surface of Venus looks like a planet that is basically made up of a lot of volcanoes. There's a lot of volcanic activity signs everywhere, including right here is a large one, uh, uh, with very unusual um, leg-like formations, which are actually unique to Venus. And there's a lot of other volcanoes, like here's one right here, there is a bunch right there. And overall, if you actually count all of them, you'll find that there's something like 1600 major volcanoes on Venus. As a matter of fact, Venus has the most volcanoes in our solar system, more even than Io. And Io, if you remember, is the most uh, volcanically active uh, object in our solar system, and that's the moon of Jupiter, that's right here. So Io does have a lot of active volcanoes, but when it comes to inactive or old volcanoes, um, Venus basically takes that prize. So, in terms of just a number of various volcanoes, including the large volcanoes, this is definitely the place uh, to take it, to take all of those prizes. Now, on Earth we have at least one major volcano, uh, and that's in Hawaii. On Venus there is almost a hundred of similar sized volcanoes. And considering the fact that you know, its surface is very similar to Earth. It's about 90% uh, basalt rock. Um, it's very unusual to see that about 65% of the entire planet here consists of various lava plains indicating that volcanism played a very major role in, in changing how this pl planet looks. Now, we've actually kind of measured the age of all of these volcanoes and they all seem to be about 500 million years old. And that's very unusual. Uh, and uh, for the most part, none of them are actually presently active, or at least we haven't really seen any uh, indications that any of them are active. But we have seen um, parameters in the atmosphere that indicate that some volcanoes still kind of spew things out, specifically sudden increase in methane in the atmosphere indicated that there is at least a few volcanoes that are still spewing things out. But for the most part, this is essentially what the surface looks like. A lot of just dead volca uh, volcanic activity. Or in other words, dormant and sleeping volcanoes that are now completely inactive. But a lot of recent studies have actually showed two very important things about uh, volcanoes on this beautiful planet. One is that, well, they actually are responsible for changing the crust of this planet every few hundred million years completely. So in other words, uh, Venus is actually going to have a major volcanic eruption activity sometime in the next few 10 to maybe 100 million years. 
or maybe a little bit longer, we don't really know exactly how long it will take, but when the crust here heats up even more, when it gets even hotter, it's going to be weak to uh, weak enough to support the um, pressures coming from the inside, and the new volcanic eruption will begin, and we're going to simulate this by basically colliding a few asteroids just to kind of emulate what's going to happen to the surface of Venus. And so, essentially, here we go. So here are the volcanic eruptions that will start at some point and will continue for about 100 million years. Now, there's going to be a lot more, obviously, but this is just an initial eruption event. And so, uh, essentially, Venus will, you could call it, burst from the inside and a lot of the heat and a lot of the pressure will start coming out and recycle the entire... Um, surface of the planet once again so there will be so many eruptions that the entire surface will change and become renewed yet again and this will happen quite a few times in the next five or six billion years until our sun expands and swallows venus but this is essentially how venus recycles its surface and so up to about 2,000 more volcanoes will be formed and all of them will um, essentially create a completely new surface here. Now on Earth it doesn't happen that way. On Earth we have something called plate tectonics which actively recycles our surface and actively dissipates the heat from the inside and basically makes our planet uh, not only habitable to life for many, many reasons, but also uh, recycles the very, very important CO2, carbon dioxide. Because of the plate tectonics, because of the way that the um, actual plates move around, a lot of the CO2 gets trapped on the inside and then gets released with volcanoes and gets trapped again. On Venus, this doesn't happen. Because the eruptions happen so suddenly, the entire CO2 gets released right away. And so one of the reasons Venus is the way it is today is because it actually lacks plate tectonics. Now let's go back a few uh, billion years and find out why exactly is it that Venus doesn't have any plate tectonics on the surface. We're going to create a new system here with the Sun and two uh, planets. One is going to be right here and one is going to be right here. So these are early Venus and early Earth. So both of these are relatively similar in pretty much everything. As a matter of fact, they were very likely twins. They both had um, very similar surfaces, very similar densities, and they even had water on the surface. So here is the face of early Earth with basically crust and water and uh, atmospheric pressure of about one atmosphere. This is just for the simulation purposes. And here's Venus. Very similar in every respect. Maybe a little bit more water here, but this is just because I pressed this button a little bit too long. We're going to maybe decrease a little bit of water, making it a little bit more realistic. And so here we go. Now, with time, Venus started to lose the water. So something happened and the water started to evaporate. It's probably because there wasn't enough magnetic um, magnetosphere, magnetic field to protect water. And it's also probably because it was a little bit closer to the sun than the Earth. But basically, water started to disappear completely. And we're still not entirely sure how, but water is directly responsible for keeping um, very active plate tectonics. So, for example, on our planet Earth, because of water, uh, the actual plates underneath the water are different from the plates above it. And they're a little bit more dense, and so they actually sink underneath these, these other plates. And this sinking allows for the recycling of various crusts uh, that are deposited on the surface and obviously recycles carbon dioxide as well. Now, Venus lost the water and its crust became sort of very similar everywhere. It sort of started, be it, it became very uniform. It also started losing atmosphere uh, at first because there was uh, nothing protecting it from the sun, but we're not going to remove atmosphere because Venus recovered from that event later. Now, at this point, there was no more water, and so all of the um, surface was kind of similar. And it started to heat up relatively similarly as well, but because it was closer to the sun and because it was actually a little bit hotter than the Earth, it kind of repaired itself. So basically, it was able to recirculate the materials relatively actively, so no plates were actually formed. And this is a very interesting concept because... On Earth, something else happens. Let me just show you what happened on Earth. So, first of all, water always stayed with us. 
But also another really important difference or another important event started happening here on Earth. Some of the areas where the crusts were kind of joined together were actually still damaged from all of the heat and were not repaired just enough, mostly because they were cooling down too fast. So even though for the most part, all of these uh, planes on Earth, basically all of the planes were just like on Venus being repaired actively because of the heat, some areas, so areas where later on we developed the um, the so-called plate tectonics, plate crusts, or I guess boundary areas, as you can uh, also call them, um, were actually constantly damaged. They never had a chance to repair. And at some point, they basically snapped and created the boundaries that we have today where the plate tectonics either uh, converge or diverge or slide against each other. And all of this was very, very important and only happened because um, Earth was a little bit farther away from the sun and it was a little bit cooler and also because water was partially responsible for causing um, this damage. We're still not entirely sure how all of this occurred, but basically Earth maintained its plate tectonics and Venus didn't. And because Venus didn't have the plate tectonics, it started to warm up, it started to heat up more and more and more. And water by then was probably already gone, atmosphere was already dwindling. And then a few 10 or maybe a few hundred million years later, um, something started happening. The planet was so hot, it became so heated that it suddenly started exploding from the inside. And we're going to simulate this by uh, basically colliding a bunch of objects into Venus to create this humongous explosion. Now, it wasn't really as big as you're about to see, but this is just to kind of give you a dramatization of such event. So, the volcanoes basically started erupting all over the surface. This was the first such eruption, there were probably a few more afterwards, and the entire surface became essentially molten, became covered with these very, very large volcanoes, and all of the carbon dioxide on the inside got released, a lot of other stuff like sulfur dioxide became released as well, and suddenly the atmosphere of Venus became really, really thick. So because of this sudden increase in atmospheric pressure, the atmosphere of Venus was now something like 90 times the atmosphere of Earth, and it acquired a tremendous greenhouse effect, and since then, Venus was really, really, really hot. And uh, it very likely changed a little bit uh, throughout the years uh, with more eruptions, but for the most part, that's essentially how Venus uh, recycles its crust and what actually happens on the surface and why it's actually so hot. Now, it's very possible that this might one day happen to Earth as well, especially if we lose the water. But for now, we're pretty safe because water does protect us and uh, does create and maintains the plate tectonics on our surface. So for as long as we have plate tectonics, we really shouldn't have such a crazy and dramatic uh, runaway greenhouse effect. And uh, as you can see, this is the new surface of Venus after the collisions. Now, this planet will very likely undergo another such event in the next few hundred million years, so we might uh, one day even witness it if we're still around. But for now, though, what we know about Venus is that even though it started like Earth, because of the greenhouse effect and because of the lack of plate tectonics on the surface and lack of exchange of material on the surface, it's basically a very, very hot hell-like conditions. And anyway. Hopefully you learned something more about Venus in this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's explode Venus before we go. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. This happened a little bit too fast. Let's do it again to our planet Earth that is still being developed and is kind of still brand new. Not anymore, it's not. Now it's gone completely.